All right, ladies and gentlemen, what it do, what it is, what's happening, what the business be, what up, though? It's your boy, Nate Bennett, here with another amazing, extraordinary episode of the Extraordinary Exchange Podcast, where we're giving you free game, talking to entrepreneurs, talking to hustlers, giving you that real. Got my co-host, Ben. What's good, Benzino? We back at it again. Another great show, another great episode, another great guest. Another phenomenal guest. We got a special one for y'all, man. When when we initially, you know, came up with the podcast, I'm going through my mental roller decks of people who I know are dope entrepreneurs and hustlers. And uh, this young lady came up for sure. Didn't reach out until much later. Actually, this, this has been a long time coming. I thought we, I know we reached out a while ago. Didn't really connect, but um, had the pleasure of initially connecting with her years ago in our network marketing days together. You still network marketing? No. No. Nah, nah. We'll talk about that in another episode. Mm-hmm. I feel we gotta have a network marketer on. Just talk about the pros and the cons. Love the time over there, but uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll be done with that. But from the from the time I I initially met her face to face, just an amazing energy, an aura about her. Uh, again, hustler, entrepreneur. She's a dog mom, um, mm-hmm. educator, speaker. You've seen her on Forbes. You've seen her on. CBS entrepreneur NASDAQ. She's been all over the place. She's interviewed some amazing leaders. She meant interviewed my mentor and Les Brown. When I seen that, I was like, all right, she's official. Um, and many, many other people. But uh, without further ado, y'all gonna hear her story, y'all gonna be inspired by it, and uh she's gonna light a fire under y'all ass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the incomparable Miss Tiana Burst. What's going on, Tiana? Thank you for having me, y'all. It's good to be here, man. It hasn't been a long time, Kevin, for real, on some real shit. So it's a good to be uh it's gonna be appreciated for you know where I started and kind of where I'm at right now, too. For sure, for sure. I mean, so let's 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 take it back then. Let's go back to where it all started. You know, you're an entrepreneur, you're a speaker, educator, all those good titles, TV personality. We see you on the news giving all this game to folks. That's hella funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. I'm just giving you a resume. That's what I it know. is. I know, but it's still it's still a little like it's it it's, is. It's, you know, know, it's not normal, but I, for me, I I feel like it's normal. But I got a funny story I'll be sharing later on that uh TV part with my dad. It was hilarious. But I learned early on that I had this thing called self-awareness. And uh I went to college for three months, I dropped out. I actually had a scholarship for softball. It was very interesting. And I was burnt out, didn't take it. So my self-awareness kicked in where I said, you know what, this isn't the path that's meant for me. And I remember thinking about this when I was in a criminal justice class. I got up, milled the class, and I never went back, fucking left. And thank God I have these two wonderful parents who just believed that I would find my way because I had these talents and gifts that far exceeded what I could understand when I'm 18, 19 years old. And like any young person who feels like they go astray a little bit, you get pulled in a different direction. And my direction was Los Angeles and running around with a fake ID with all my girlfriends and going to certain clubs, going to certain environments. But one thing I learned along me cranking up the same amount of debt, buying a Mercedes and, you know, all these things, because I wanted to keep up with the Joneses, because guess what? If I'm around people who have money, I want to appear like I have money, too. That now hindsight, it was the right thinking and the wrong thinking. I mean, to be transparent. But I remember walking into rooms where it's like artists and celebrities and they would always gravitate towards me and they wouldn't gravitate towards me from a personal standpoint. Yeah. They probably found me attractive. They were, they wanted to spend time with me because they felt like they were inspired or like they had their homegirl with them. Mm -hmm. And I remember just like halting all of that at the age of 21 because again, I was flat broke. And so I'm at my mom and dad's, I'm trying to find my way. I'm 50 grand in debt. My car's about to be possessed. And I said, I surrender. I got to file bankruptcy. My parents had done in the past. They were, you know, middle class, had money. My mom was a saver. My dad was a spender, but they really had money. And I remember just praying on my knees, going into a closet and saying, God, I don't know what else to ask for except for a mentor. And I said, if you give me a mentor, and this is the funny part, maybe not now, but this is what I said, I swear. I said, if you give me a mentor, God, I swear to God, <laughs> I'll, 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 I will take it. I will do it. And three months later, I just saw someone in a beautiful car. And I said, how'd you get that? Mm. And he said, I'll show you. Meet me at this place at two o'clock. Met him two o'clock. Never looked back. 
14 wow. months later, I was making over $120,000 a year. I was in network marketing. That was the game changer for me. I learned leadership. I learned fundamentals. I learned follow-up. I learned politics. And I learned what industry I did not want to be in, which was that one. So if you fast forward to the storyline of I lost that business because I didn't play their games. I ended up being flat broke again. Now, after having a magazine and money and investments, I'm literally at square zero with 10,000 bucks in the bank and overhead that I couldn't really afford the next couple months. And I called it quits again. I surrendered. I said, you know what, mom, dad, I'm moving back in. If I built it once, I can build it again. And I was at 27, 28 years old then. You know, that's that's a hard pill to swallow when you got your own house and shit. Uh-huh. And uh, and that process of me being broke lasted longer than what I ex- expected. And that's when I was just trying to find my way. I listened to Les Brown on YouTube and I had just a vision of me interviewing him one day and I kept listening to him. I I love writing. I've loved it since I was a kid. So I emailed the black local newspaper. I had 1700 Facebook followers my mom created my Facebook pages and I just said, okay, I'm going to cast a vision to this editor and see if he'll fucking f- want to take it. And he did. And so now at 28, 29 years old, after making money, having a Rolex watch at 650 down to zero, I uh, was making 400 bucks up a month writing for the newspaper. Hmm. Went from making six figures to $400 a month trying to figure out social media. Hmm. And I remember... I admired Trent Shelton. I admired Les Brown. I remember Trent Shelton was speaking in Sacramento. I'm still making 400 bucks a month. And I'm my business partner to this day with me, Markel. And uh, I said, let's go to the event. Let's park by the back door and see if we can get just, just one interview. This could be my slingshot. We sat in my Lexus for five hours. And that back door opened up. And it was him. And I said, I'm with the newspaper. I got to get an interview. And he said, you can do it. But after my event's over, and I didn't interview him until midnight. And I got there at 12 noon and slingshot that. It's great. Now that has 50,000 views. Now I got some more followers. Now I could day trade some more attention. Now I'm thinking psychologically how I can make this happen. And then one day I was talking to a family member and I was telling her how my next big moment was going to be to interview Les Brown. I didn't know how, I didn't know when, but he was coming to Sacramento. If I had to do the same thing, I would. Mm. And, um, she said, why don't you just get a job? <laughs> and Can't you mad at her, all right. Didn't say shit. Right. Next morning, still bothered me. Self-awareness. I'm bugged out. I'm mad. Something's not right. Woke up, grabbed my coffee mug, and I said, don't let small minds shit on your big dreams. Welcome to Bar Talk and Coffee. Little did I know. That's years what later, yeah. and years later, a video I did over filtered from my cell phone would end up making a seven figure personal brand. Little did I know. And all the while I'm just talking about my mess I'm going through. Cause that's my message. Mm-hmm. And I'm just trying to figure my shit out too. So slowly, but surely all my videos per week started to go viral. You can call them reels because they were like reels, right? They started mm-hmm. to go viral. And I said, how am I going to monetize this? The only thing I thought of being a business person was like, I got to make apparel. Okay. A friend of mine loaned me $5,000. I invested in my apparel. I got on TV, slingshot that one too, found the producer's information, emailed them. I have a clothing line. This is my story. Come on TV next week. That day, I made over $3,000 on free television promoting bar talk and coffee apparel. I sold out in two weeks. Then I was on to something. Now, here's a caveat. Sometimes when you start to like make a little something, right? <laughs> you start to become, feel like you become a little something. Right. You start to lose the vulnerability with your audience. So what happened was people started to come to me, businesses, and said, hey, we saw your videos. We want you to consult with us. So then I created a company, District Media Press. It, there was a box that said press and media that had my apparel in it. And I was like, fuck it, District Media Press. Markel, let's go. You know tech. I know brand. Let's run it. And then I became unrelatable. Mm, mm. And that's where you go wrong. Mm. I had 13 independent independent contractors. I had a studio space. I made a half a million dollars my first 12 months as a consultant. I had a camera guy. 
And I then got followed around like I was Gary fucking V and I lost the attention of a lot of my followers. Why? I no longer became relatable because I had elevated more than they can they can actually visualize for themselves. And I my reach went down, my impact went down, and then COVID happened. And then I now know this, and this is a super important thing that I learned, is that you bring in a half a million dollars in one year, but you're still living with your mom. That's a broken system. Mm. Now I know investing and all the things, but I, if I was the only salesperson and I'm forking out all this money to people, but I'm living with my mom and I'm still broke, bringing in a half a million in one year, that system is not for Tiana Burse. So COVID gave me the excuse to close doors because I didn't have the balls to do it before then. Uh. So then I realized this. I would rather make $100,000 a year and just have Tiana Burse as a personal brand than to make a half a million and have nothing to live with my mom, Carol. That was an eye-opener. And when I doubled down on brands, Facebook called me. No, I thought it was a scam at first. I was like, uh-huh. maybe a creator. What? Looked at the emails. They had executive CC. I'm doing my, you know, we know us women. We're we're investigators. We're right. investigators. Right. We know that. We will find out who, what, when, or why. We will clone your phone without you knowing. We will figure it out. We will look at a text and see a smiley face and think it's a heart. We we don't play around. Oh, so, oh no. Guess <laughs> all I'm telling the truth. So that's real. So basically. I ended up doing all my homework and, the, and research and found the executives and it was the same people. And they ended up signing me as an official creator. And I was making bank, y'all. I was doing 15 G's in their starter program a month for doing 30 second videos. Mm. And I was like, all right, God, so you're telling me that this is it. So then I start to elevate and then Entrepreneur Magazine calls and Forbes calls and Yahoo Finance calls and NASDAQ calls. And now it's like, Holy crap, I just made the best decision of my life because the universe got out of its way to give me what I wanted. So now I'm like free. I have time freedom. I have personal brand. I have cash flow that I can actually keep. And then my dad died. Huh. I'm like, damn. You know, I did a video and I said, uh, Mother Teresa once said that when she thought she had a handle on life, her handle broke. Huh. And that hit me so hard because when my dad died, my handle broke and I'm thinking I am untouchable and I am not. Yeah. And so, you know, I made the pivots. I didn't work for a year and three months. Um, and it's only been about a year that I've been back, you know, building and building big. Um, but yeah, that's the story. And I, and I referenced the story about my dad. It's so funny, you know, yeah. Having a billboard in Sacramento is not normal. Yeah. Being on TV is not normal. And I remember one day thinking it wasn't normal when he was alive and I forgot to tell him. Mm. And he turned on the TV and he saw his daughter. I got off TV, he called me, he said, he called my mom and he said, but yeah, I just saw Boog on TV. That's a trip. And I called me, he said, Boog, I was like, I know dad, I know, I know. But one thing that my dad did for me, and I talk about this on stage, was that he believed in me so much that he would uh, subscribe to Entrepreneur Magazine every single month. It's like the, the actual hard copy. Mm-hmm. He would call me every month when they arrived and say, Book, I got the magazine for you. I got the magazine for you. Mm-hmm. And I'd pick it up and I'd read it. And he goes, I know one day you're going to be in this. One day you will. And one day you might even write for them. And before he passed, I did both because of him. So when my handle broke, not just the handle broke, that, that heart, that gut, that one person who said, You don't stop. Because I see that in you, that broke. And it broke me. And I realized at that time that, you know, about a year later that, you know, a year and a half later, like, I needed a puppy. Apparently, that's what you do when you have a grief happen. So you get an emotional support dog. What you don't realize is that people say, get a puppy, get a puppy. You get them at eight weeks old. They're emotional because they just lost their litter mate and their litter, their fur mom, and they need your emotional support. But I need their emotional support, so I'm fucking screwed. Mm-hmm. But uh, but now she's doing good. Good, she's uh, seven months old. But that's that was that's my story. And yeah, I was on TV on Friday. I you know I used the pain um, to fuel me to level up. And I remember this, and I'll just say this and pass mic to you guys. I remember like feeling really low, mm-hmm. and I, and I sat there. I sat here in this house. I have a beautiful house. And I sat here and I said, 
to my, I talked to myself. I said, T, you can't get mad on results you don't have on work you have not put in. You cannot bring your father back, but you can make him proud. Get your fucking ass up and go to work. And three weeks later, I was a keynote speaker for San Francisco and Los Angeles at their small business expo with hundreds of business owners. Three weeks later. That's my story. All right, folks. So there you have it. Like, what do you need to say no more? Yo, just your story alone is uh is inspiring, man. Sheesh, getting goosebumps. Um I feel like this is kind of like the conversation we had. I don't know if you remember when we first, first, first met at a conference. We were just yeah. like some back hall talking somewhere just for like an hour, just just having like just real transparent talk like this. And this this reminds me of that. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. One important thing, you, said you had a lot of dope lessons to learn from that story you just gave us. The first one I want to bring back is you were talking about you lost contact with your market that you were dealing with at that time. A, it's something that we see common. I'm, I'm, I, everybody knows I, I love rap. So in the rap game, your first album is always your best album because that's that's your real true love. Like that's that you worked with this for 20 years, you still broke, you, your story's real. You get a little bit of money and you lose your audience because you're not that same person who you was broke back in the project. And a lot of times in that scenario, people feel like, this new image I have is the image of a successful person that people want to hear, not realizing that the audience wants to still relate to you as a person. So I guess my question is all that is, I see many people struggle with that transition. How did you realize it wasn't going the right way? And then what did you do to actively kind of bring it back to being relatable, I guess is the way to say it. Bring back the old Kanye. Oh, so I was just gonna say that. Oh, man, you say go, go do your thing, T. Just gonna say, no, look, I went to dinner last night and I got in a Tesla and he was playing Kanye's first album. Mm. And I said, this was his best. Mm. I said it, I said the same thing. But here's the thing. If we understand the psychology of human beings, more people are in pain than they are not. Mm. There's a, there's this, this I remember, always remember these stats. 97%, okay? So here, here's really the stat. So 1% of the world is super wealthy, okay? 3% is rich. 96%, they're not. They're either below average, middle, or I don't even know what middle is right now because of the way the economy is. Right. And so people are more in debt and in lack and in pain than they are in the promise of life. And if you only speak to the three and 1%, you're losing the 96% that supported you in the first place. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's wrong or bad to elevate, but there's ways to elevate and still be a human being. And I think what I looked at was, A, I looked at numbers. I'm a numbers person. I looked at the data and I was like, all right, this video did this, this video, same as this did this, kind of similar message. People are needing the inspiration, they're in pain. This one shows me on a sailboat. It got dra dramatically less views, zero comments, because no one can relate to a fucking Monday morning and you're in San Francisco on a fucking sailboat. Mm. So that told me self-awareness that I need to find a way to position myself where I can be okay with having more because I've gone through the pain and the struggle and I've put in the time and the grind to where I feel like I was at at that time, but also relay a message to inspire and not to reject. Because if I'm rejecting them, it's through my words. If I'm inspiring them, it's through my words. So I had to find a happy medium. So did you find yourself actively changing your entire messaging to do that? Like, how, like what was your actual, like, how did you say, okay, what, am I, what did you do differently? I guess when you decide, okay, this is, this is not working. What was the actual method that you used to say, this is what I'm gonna actively try to re, Re rebrand myself. Yeah. Well, first things first, I got rid of my video guy. Okay. For because who needs a camera person walking around with you? I mean, fuck. I mean, you fucking J Lo. Who gives? A shit? <laughs> and then I just did in person camera, one on one, first person, not second person, right. and that was one of the game changers. And then my message became a jab, 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 right hook. So my message became, okay, this is what I'm feeling that I'm going through right now because I still go through stuff like. Mother Teresa, I did the video. That video has, has done very well because more, more people than not have had their handle break. 
And so that was key. So, and I, so the jab, 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 right hook was, okay, I'm going to inspire, 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 but I'm also going to tell you here, buy my fucking course and do better. Cause I can't, you have to participate in your own rescue. I can lead a horse to water, but the damn horse has to drink it. And that's how I made my message very clear. Shout out to Gary V. Jab, 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 right hook. I see. Mm -hmm. As I saw you perk up at the same time, Ben, because you know where that was from. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, lesson that you kind of displayed in your in the beginning of your story, you saw someone in a nice vehicle and you were humble enough and eager enough and hungry enough to and just say, hey, be transparent. Like, yo, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What do you do? Right. And it took you under their wing and, and, you know, coached you up and mentored you up. And you had to be willing to, you know, meet them halfway. Like you said, shout out that mentor. Right. Who's that mentor and what uh, are some lessons that they taught you that helped you with that first journey going into entrepreneurship? Because you cause, I mean, again, you mentioned network marketing and all the amazing things that taught you in leadership, the personal development, the sales and all that good stuff. Um, but specifically that mentor, what did, what did he teach you? He, him or her? Yeah, it was him. And the first thing, you know, he, he gave me a book, he gave me rich dad, poor dad. That was it. Shut up. I, 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 needed, I needed to develop a different kind of mindset because I, my mindset wasn't where it needed to be at to elevate my life. And, you know, I, when I got my top 30 under 30 and I was in the running for top 40 under 40 at one time, I read it like 600 books in 15 years. You guys, like I, I like, submerge myself into personal growth because, and I still do every morning on YouTube, right? Because I know that I need to acquire a new level of knowledge to become a new level person. Cause it doesn't matter what level I'm at. My handle is going to fucking break. So, uh, so he gave me that book. And then a second book I went and bought when Barnes and Noble exists in, in Sacramento was I got, um, I got, Oh my God, Florence Scovel Shin, the game of life. I had to play it. And that book changed my entire mindset. And then I got the magic of thinking big. And then I got the seven habits of highly effective people. And then I got, you know, the art of investing and the art of war. And, you know, I, I, look, there's 600 bucks. And so I, I submerged myself in there. And the one book that actually changed my life was a book called Who Moved My Cheese? And it's a book about two mice who go to the same, they go to maze, they go to the same block of cheese every day. What they didn't notice was that the block of cheese is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And the reason why that is so important is because as human beings and as entrepreneurs, we don't understand when something's getting smaller and smaller and when it's time to pivot. And that's the one thing I do is I do an inventory check. I do a checkup from the neck up. I do an inventory check of, is, is this working? Is this, and, and it's hard to do that when you know that the struggle has to last for a little longer than you want. And it's easy to quit. And you might be quitting too soon, like three feet from gold. But what I realized that every single business and COVID exposed it is that they never pivoted. The B2B that didn't go e-commerce never pivoted. Now, 100,000 businesses that sold apparel are closed down. And so that woke me up. That book woke me up. And when I saw COVID, I already knew it was going to happen. So that's why I didn't care to close my doors because I knew that there was businesses that I couldn't consult anymore. And it was my turn to pivot and double down on brand. And then that's when Facebook called me. So it's an evolution of it. It's funny. I just gave that uh, analogy to a young person today that three feet from gold because uh, they kept pivoting. They've had like 10 jobs within the last like year and a half. And I'm like, oh, you, you you're doing too much moving around. You got to find something, stick to it and stick to it long enough to where you, you know, we just have, we, we, we do all the mess and all the nonsense. I've heard I've read every single last one of them books. And it's very rare that someone gives me a book that I've never even heard of. The Game of Life by who? Lauren Scobble Shin. The Game of Life. I had to play it. They said that life is life is a battle, but life is not a battle. Life is a game, and you got to know how to play it. So there's, there, they say that the, the, there's rules in the Old and New Testament. So you sow, you shall receive. So you have a vision. You, if you don't have a vision, my people perish. Mm -hmm. These are all principles in the basic yeah. before leaving this earth. Right. Wow. But they, she put that in, the, in an analogy in the book that is brilliant. You know, Amazon probably five dollars used, and it's one of the greatest books ever written. It changed everything for me. Okay. Say less. I'm putting it on my uh, Audible now. <laughs> uh, Nate, you you spoke about people jumping from job to job. Um, another important part of that story I picked up was the network marketing piece. While you were there, you realized this wasn't a job for you, but you were able to get get some gain from that. So, 
I think that's an important point as well. Is a lot of times we end up in these spots that you you we typically we know this is not my dream job, not my dream space. But there's a lot of game to be learned while you're here. Um, speak about that for a second, because like I said Benny Benny talked about people jumping from job to job and not planning out something. But I guess the question I have is more so while you're there in that space absorbing the opportunities and lessons that are there, even though that might not be the proper space for you long-term. And how did, how did you kind of, A, realize that wasn't for you, but then realize, hey, let me stay here and get these several lessons in life while I'm here? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. The first thing is first is that when people are in a position that they are not happy in, they tend to focus on the lack and the, and the unhappiness of the situation. So they're not able, their minds are not able uh, unconsciously or subconsciously to actually look at the blessings and the benefits in that position that they're in. So the first thing is they've got to create a different level of mindset and become grateful for the fact that they got a fucking job because people out here not having a job and homeless after working in corporate America because inflation and whatever it may be. So they got to change their mindset and have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, I used to have the same thing. I, I One time I had a job before I had a mentor. I worked at a hair salon as a front desk girl. And I would drive one hour, one way to go there. And I would literally say every morning, I'm so grateful that I get a chance to listen to this great music and enjoy my car ride. And da, 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 da. and I would just be so grateful for that. And it would parlay into my work and my job. And I was one of the favorite people in the whole salon. So I think the, the reality is that they've got to develop a gratitude mindset. I mean, Queen Oprah says it best. If you are grateful for what you have, you have more to be grateful for. Mm, that's, and that's a dope analogy. I, and, and it's a lesson in everything. Um, I remember a similar story. I got a my one of my dad's old friends back in the day used to be a, a old uh, real estate tycoon guy, old Jewish guy. And one day, um, they talk about how he became successful. And he said, back when I got my first job at McDonald's, everybody else was there trying to steal hamburgers. The, the reason why people got got that job is they wanted to steal hamburgers, take them home to their family. And I thought that was a great thing. I was at McDonald's learning supply chain, learning management, learning those type of things. And I took those skills I learned from my first job at McDonald's, I think 12 years old, whatever you say it was, and took those same skills and created my own business because I'm literally working at one of the biggest businesses in the world. So if I just observe how they move and what they do, it's blessings in that. And while our boss is still in hamburgers out the back, I'm counting how, how many trucks come in, how they move this around. And when he said that to me, it, it totally changed my thinking about all these type of little jobs. I'm getting because I was 15 years old at that time. And I'm like, okay, yeah, if I'm working at this job here, I need to understand what they're doing properly, what they're not doing properly, and to take those lessons and move those on to my own business later on in life. So I'm, I'm happy I heard you say it because it's something I've actively done my whole life. That's dope. That's dope. Now that's brilliant because he was he was he was learning that how it moves how the system McDonald's has a fucking system McDonald's owns more real estate than maybe next to the Catholic Church. Like you, yeah, you go in there and you learn, you learn the game and then you take the game and you learn how to implement it into your next phase of your life. You know because we have these phases. Twenties are gonna suck. You know thirties are interesting. Forties are insight. Fifty and sixty is like oh shit. You know. What have I done? What happened? Like, it's weird how the evolution happens. But most people don't have that mindset of this is just a phase. And if I can get through this phase, I went through a phase making 400 bucks a month writing for the newspaper to then writing an entrepreneur magazine. But the phase of writing in, 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 in the newspaper I was writing in here would not have happened if I didn't have those articles to skyrocket my social to then day trade attention and then to get the attention of entrepreneur magazine. You got to start somewhere. It's necessary. It's a requirement. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the price you pay. It's the price of admission. Look, as much as we as much as we don't like to admit it, and I hate to admit it too, none of us are getting out of this life alive. At least I know we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But mm -hmm. you know what? What is the point of 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 living a life where you you don't learn and you don't enjoy your process? Because it's going to come to an end at some point. So you might as well go out loving life and having some fucking gratitude. My dad was alive on Wednesday, died on Thursday. Mm. Diagnosed stage four cancer Wednesday, died at home Thursday. He had 18 months or less. I didn't even have 18 hours. We never know. We never know. God bless the person who was driving home and hated their job and got in a car accident. And now they're hopefully in heaven. 
Like you don't know. So it's so important that the mindset of human beings, I try to preach this because I, this is such a huge passion of mine since my dad passed, is, mm-hmm. is you got to develop an, a mindset of what's the point? I'm going to go all out on being me and loving life and loving the job that I maybe don't like to do. But fuck, at least I got it. You know, uh, the, the the janitor at Facebook swept them floors every day. Mm. Didn't even have a job. He was a homeless man. Mark Zuckerberg said, who are you? He said, I'm homeless. I just sweep the floors, keep them clean. That man is a millionaire today. Mm. Perspective. Perspective. I know. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, all right. So marketing, social media marketing, um, DMP, bar talk. Um, we had hustle season, all, all these different media platforms um, that are vying for people's attention. You, Shiana Burst. I mean, you spoke about yourself in the third person many times. <laughs> like you are a brand. So when you came on, we both came on camera. We were like, yo, on brand. We got our brand here. You got your brand there. Talk about uh, the importance of that for, you know, people listening um, to just be on brand, like give them some game when it comes to, um, you know, marketing your brand, uh, social media. And then we'll, we'll, we'll pivot into your, your latest yeah. endeavor that you've gotten articles and it's getting all this pub um, with uh, reels to riches. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so Hustle Season was the was the show I created showing the day in the life of DMP, right? Mm-hmm. So that second person, camera person, didn't quite, ran a good good year or so, cut it ties. Aesthetically, it was dope, though. Aesthetically, it was it sick. relatable, but I, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it wasn't relatable at all. I mean, fucking drones coming in my studio. Right. I'm like sitting there opening the window. Oh, fuck, are you kidding me? Uh, but so now it's I went back to Bar Talk and Coffee. Uh, it's a solo podcast. I have guests on it sometimes. I have a huge, a huge line of guests uh, happening after I get back from the Amazon Prime business reality show next month. Uh, but, you know, the hustle season, they, it, it day traded attention. It did its job. Although my numbers went down, I still had some phenomenal quality type, big level people to follow me. Like, you know, the Trent Shelton followed me after he saw hustle season. It was weird. Like, I was like, oh, cool. Um, but as a brand, what I didn't plant my sword on was uh, locking myself in and not being able to pivot or change. Because like I said, we evolve and we change best based upon our circumstances and our surroundings and where we're at in life. And so when I publicly said, Hey, I'm going to drop an hustle. I'm going to go with bar talk and coffee. Do you guys like it? You do. I did a poll. They liked it. Um, I think what people don't do well right now is they don't day trade attention enough. And you know, the billboard was cool, but like that was more day trading attention. Right. And I didn't even do that. My brand manager did it because I, I was like, hey, what about a billboard? She's like, let me try that. It was weird. So, you know, I think that what people don't understand is that social proof is real. And I could take on a restaurant right now, which we did, and only focus on marketing with micro food bloggers that have a thousand followers, 10,000 followers, 5,000 followers, give them a free $100 food credit and drink credit. And they have to do a reels around it. And then boom, our client out of the Bay Area grew from 6,700 to over 15,000 in nine days all organically because they had two food bloggers go in there every day. Underpriced attention. Mm. A, a $100 food credit at a restaurant cost them $20. Mm. But their revenue got 10x in 90 days. So that, you know, marketing is marketing. You have marketing is that. PR is me getting in publications. And you have to mix the two because if you don't mix the two, you don't stand out in a crowded space. There are 60 billion posts that go through anyone's newsfeed on a daily basis. If you don't have a stamp of approval by a third party person other than Facebook and Instagram and TikTok, you're not gonna get the attention of a human being who has the attention less than a fucking goldfish. That's, That's the power of marketing. And also I will say this, is that social media is psychology, nothing more, nothing less. You're taking human beings who have a certain way of thinking and we're all very similar and you're putting all of us on one platform. That is psychology. And my job as a psychologist of sales and brand is to get your attention and keep it longer than you seeing the next post that has the, that looks like the shiny ball syndrome. That's just the reality. So every day and every week, I should say, on a Sunday, my team and I are getting together 
and we are mapping out the attention for the week. We're mapping out the income goals for the week, and we are positioning our content around that, whether it's a call to action, whether it's using ManyChat to automate our stuff. You know, there's, uh, there's so many AI variables that we're using to automate what we're doing. And when I look at the world that we're living in and the amount of people that are that gravitate towards my particular mindset and my knowledge, I knew that my pivot was going to be really aggressive. And my pivot was, fuck it. I am a speaker. I'm going to be speaking. I do work at, you know, I speak at universities. I'll speak on stages, but I'm going to build one of the biggest, strongest online communities where I'm going to dive deep into people on a bi-monthly basis, go live Q and A, have my own affiliate program so that people can make an extra $500 with selling my products, which is a win-win because half of something's better than hundred percent of nothing. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to plant my flag in this. We'll do $40 million in sales over the next five years. And we're going to have four products. But the main one we're going to focus on is Reels to Riches. And the reason why it's called that is not because I'm always about like showcasing and throwing out about how much money I make in people's faces. I don't like to do that because any given moment, I'm sending somebody $100 who can't afford a Thanksgiving meal. I don't, but using the the psychology of people are so gravitated towards instant that reels to riches just made sense as a trademark name. Now it's not even about riches, really. It's about you scrolling, not scrolling on someone else's page while they make money. It's about you scrolling on other on, on people scrolling on your page so that you can fucking make money. Because our screen time is crazy if you look at it. And I see people scroll for an hour in the morning. You should be having people scroll on you and you have cha-chings on your phone. That's why I made it. And so I dive into mindset. I dive into the flywheel of income that I'm that I we're doing right now for a professional baseball player. Our team is how I've built it, how we automate ourselves to do an upwards of three, four, five, even ten thousand dollars a day. I mean, it's it's the basic formula for success, and anyone can do it. Any you could be a carpenter. And have a carpenter course for intro beginners and still do over 100 grand a year. So that's why I created it. It's not even really about the wealth. It's about you educating and elevating your life and your mindset. Because right now the world needs that. And there are people out here that are hurting. And I hear it and I see it every day. And it's tough. It is tough. I've had someone say that they were four months behind on rent. You know, it's like, I know these pains. And it's like, but I, if I got to, I got to give you the tools. You've got to participate in your own rescue. I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in my mindset and my education. It takes that in order for you to take yourself seriously. So I can give you the course, but you might not take it seriously. But if I have to get you a fee of entry, you might actually implement what I'm teaching you. Got to have skin in the game. <laughs> Got to. Come on. Anything you get for free is, is worthless. You won't even see the value. Won't even see the value. So I know I know this is the basics of, of what you got right now, but I, I want to ask you the actual question. So, a being able to go viral, having a viral moment, hard to do, but people can do it. But very few people can translate that viral moment to monetization. How, what what how, can you give a little basic of how that uh, of what what the what how do you how do you take the attention and turn it into money for the average person? What's the what's the basis of that? Start with just making some apparel. Give your give your give yourself give a name. Give yourself a, a name. Mine's Bar Talk and Coffee. I mean, I, it was so big at one point when I had my apparel. I was walking around Sacramento. I had people going, "Hey, Bar Talk." They were even calling me Tiana or T. They hey. call me Bar Talk. <laughs> hey, Bar Talk. I'm like, "Hey, what's up? What's popping?" So that's the first thing. And guess what? It doesn't cost you a dime. And I share this in my part of my course. You can go to YouTube. You can go to BigCartel.com. You can get a free account. You can go to T Public or Teespring. Go to YouTube. I'm not going to show you how. I'm going to tell you what to do. Go to YouTube and watch how to integrate both and then go to Canva, get a free account and, ha and make your own designs. And boom, now you have an apparel you can send somebody. Maybe you're making 10, 15 bucks a pop. But guess what? That could be an extra $150, $500 per week. Now, guess what? You're making some bread and you can reinvest in yourself. That's the quickest way and way number one. Every single brand to include restaurants, and establishments, they should be having their own apparel. That is a walking billboard for yourself. Just like that. Second way you can do it is you can sell your knowledge. Everybody should have access to Microsoft. Go into Word, start typing out an ebook, or hell, use Chat GPT to make yourself an ebook. You can do that 20 times a day. Make sure it's, it fits your, your zone because it's kind of AI is kind of different. Go to Canva, make a book cover, 
and go to Kindle and let Amazon drive its own traffic to you, to the, to your knowledge, your eBooks. And now you're making at least, if you have 20 books on there that you can make within three days, for example, and you sell one a day and you sell it for $9, do the math. So I teach all of this inside Reels to Riches because the, the amount of money you can make as a flywheel is crazy. It's crazy. Your social media is your resume. You're on it anyways. Fuck, get paid for it. I get more speaking engagements from social media than I ever have in my life. $10,000 for 15 minute speech. And I just sit there talking shit like I do here. Uh -huh. But people are so afraid to put themselves out there or they don't think that there's any value in it. And there's a value in anything. We were all born with a thumbprint. And if you don't think so, then just turn what your occupation is and turn that into an actual uh, knowledge information hub. That's why I'm now at Tiana Burst Education. Mm. First time I heard that. Okay. Tiana Burst Education. Hub of knowledge. <laughs> Action too. For sure. And uh, just real quick, because uh, a lot of people uh, may not understand that term. I understand it. Um, but you were talking about day trading attention. Mm -hmm. what, what, what does that mean? Drill down on that a little bit in, in layman's terms, like and how important that is. So this is day trading attention. Once mm -hmm. you post this, I get your, your followers to see me. Now I have a new group of individuals who might resonate with my content, could then buy my course. If y'all are an affiliate, y'all get paid half. Day trading attention. Second way, if I'm doing this with my camera right here, with my podcast mic, and I'm doing a 30 second reels and I'm posting it and I'm sharing my information, that's me getting your attention on that day. If I have a post and I'm posting a picture of my billboard, that's day trading attention. Because in that billboard, like in the copy, I'm going to have a call to action that drives you to want one of my free resources that then drives you to want to buy one of my many mastermind or my courses. So with that, what day trading attention is, is that you've got to be um, on the top of people's minds and on the tip of their tongue. If you're on the top of their mind, then they're going to be talking about you. So now you have social media growth, then you have word of mouth growth. And we both know both is most, most powerful tool in, in the hood. I mean, straight up. And so every single day, it's like, how can I showcase either what I know, who I am, or what I offer? And that's the foundation of it. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm letting I'm letting this soak in because like I say in, in full <laughs> transparency, a lot of things that you're talking about are things that we talk about every Tuesday on our group meeting. Um right now, currently we have a runway into our event coming up entitled how to use that additional attention that we're getting to drive the flywheel to the other products that we have. It's a conversation that we just got off two yeah. nights ago. Um so I was I was soaking in what you're saying because it's, it's an issue that we're dealing with currently. It's we having multiple things that we do and probably communicating that 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 strategy that all these different things can help you and i would get you in over here and let you know that hey we although although you may know us from from thing a we also have other services that can help you how, how that drives that full flywheel is issue that we struggle with personally so i was i was trying to get that that game that's what we need that's what we need help with in all honesty yeah i mean it's a it's a, it's a messaging I was talking to uh, my client who's a professional baseball player and, and, you know, his brand is kind of, we're putting it together as a flywheel. It's just your messaging. You know, one day I might talk about how I made, you know, 15,000 bucks a month doing 30 second reels with, you know, meta and Instagram, or I still get paid for, I get paid for every video I fucking do from them. Um, or the next day I might talk about how I made a half a million dollars as a consultant, you know? So it's, it, but I, but I, what I do though, is I message it where it says, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a seven figure personal brand but I own multiple companies. I own an e-commerce business. You know, I own, you know, it's, it's a great, it does really well the last quarter of the year. We do over $300,000 in sales on one product. So my messaging is always like, I'm a personal brand first, but, a, but my flywheel is I have this solo podcast, which is Bar Talk and Coffee. Um, this leads to content that leads to speaking. Um, my first year as a consultant, I turn my knowledge into, into money, a cash machine. You know, I have a course on that. If you don't want to go from reels to riches, but you want to learn how to make money from your knowledge, I got a resource for you there. So it's just taking you as a personal brand and then talking about the resources and the right messaging. That way it resonates with people and they can pick and choose which one they, they see fit because, you know, one shoe does not fit all. Thanks. What uh, <clears throat> Rick James said, cracks hell of a drug. Tell me all the time, man, attention is the new drug and people go crazy for it. People lose their minds for it. People like are scrolling and, and even if they don't have a brand, they'll post something thinking it's going to do well and they get all bent out of shape and only get five or 10 likes. And then that depression or that, that 
Don't want to delete it. They delete it. Yeah, or they'll delete it. They'll right? Delete it. That that because what happens is that when we see people like us, like a post or whatever, you got to remember too. We're dealing with people who on the internet are, are damaged humans. They're ninety percent. They've, they've gone through some real life shit, like some hard shit, mm -hmm. and so they're getting their dopamine hit by every time somebody's pressing that like button or that heart. And so when the dopamine doesn't fulfill itself, then they feel like, oh shit, I got to delete it because that dopamine is so aggressive. Our brains are wired to be addicted to certain things. That's why sometimes people are addicted to drama. The cycles of toxic toxicity is real because our brains are wired to want to, it, it, it actually craves it, believe it or not. And so the same way with people getting those likes, that dopamine kicks in and it, and that crack, it's that, it's that feeling of, <gasps> and then it leaves and they need it again and it leaves, need it again and it leaves. That's why I have a schedule of when I'm on and off social for the most part. I'm not going to be on social media tonight unless I'm going to a five-star restaurant again. I'm not doing that tonight because I'm going to King's Day tomorrow. Uh, but, but you know, it's, it's important for people do what they do for likes. We know that. We know that. Mm -hmm. But I think in the space that I'm in and you guys in, it's impact over likes. And like you were saying, that 96% of people that aren't doing well, that are probably going check to check, that aren't the super rich in the 1%, you would never know that through social media because everyone's showing a highlight rail and everything's doing good, but we got to always remember that's not the case. That's not what people are really going to resonate toward consistently when you're building like real community. So, oh, and that's why today I posted like, I posted like two, two quick snippets of like when I did bar talking coffee from my mom's master bedroom, you know, like this is where it started, mm. but this is where it's at now a billboard. But like, I also gave the narrative like, yo, I've been at this for a long time. You know, my confidence level is is high because I've been through some shit. You know, you lose a couple of businesses and you lose your dad and you're like, life becomes real different for you. You have different conversations. You move differently. You associate yourself with different types of people. The same conversations you had before losing a parent become fucking stupid. You don't want to hear about the goddamn weather. You want to know, OK, how can I make an impact? Let's talk about some real shit. And so but but here's the problem is that most people are not in a self-awareness space to comprehend some of the shit that I'm saying. What's going on, yeah? You got to be self-aware. Um, and I think a lot of times, I, I had, you talked about the, the different stages of life earlier. I just had a 40s insight moment that made a whole bunch of stuff I was doing in my 20s and 30s make more sense to me. But it took, it took last, last weekend. I, last week I had, I had a, so, and sometimes that experience will give you that but you have to allow yourself to have those experiences. Um, and I think a lot of times that's, we, we block ourselves from, from experiencing life and then gain that knowledge from it to be able to relate back to. So you get, so, cause you're going to do dumb shit when you're in your twenties and thirties and over time, but you got to go through that and then look back on and say, Oh, this is why I did X, Y, Z. Um, now I understand why I did that. And now I'm moving forward not to do not Oh, what would I do it better? Um, and it's just, this is life. That's all it really is. It's life, but you've got to be a different kind of human to comprehend the parts of life that's supposed to be that matter. You, you really do. You you really do. It's not, you know, you, it's not just going through stuff because some people go through stuff and they're still in it. They've been in it for a decade. They've been in it for a decade. It's you. you it's being like okay, having the come to Jesus moment. The moment that you say, "I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired." And unless you have that come to Jesus moment, the same cycle will perpetuate itself until the day that your heart stops beating. And we got to understand that could be any time. So you don't want to waste time getting to that moment. Live, live your life. Every day as, as it lasts. Learn, grow, make money, have fun, enjoy yourself. And that's all you, that's all you can really do. That's all I do. I, I'll leave you with this, guys, because this was the most powerful thing that my dad said to me the day before he passed away. I will always remember. I even have a video on it on my page. I said, I found out he had cancer Wednesday in the back of my car. I said, Dad, how do you feel? He said, man, he said, you know, Dad's, Dad's good. You know, it's in God's hands. I just don't want to check out too soon. And the next day he checked out. We don't know. So I encourage people to try to be as fulfilled as possible on this journey called life and appreciate when the handle breaks 
because look, life is long but short. My dad was 63. Like, come on. Like, it's it's crazy to me how how many human beings walk around angry and resentful and, and negative. And it's like, yo, this is a gift. Yeah. Perspective, good. though. Perspective. You say you have that on your page, that moment, or you have the actual video? Like, I have a video where I talk about it. I was ready to talk about okay. it, like, and okay. I talked about it. No, I thought you had a video, like you were videoing the conversation with you and your dad. I was no, like, but I have a video that I recorded the day I found out he had cancer. Yeah. I was at my favorite restaurant, and I was bawling like a baby saying, life is short. Love mm. the ones you have. Not knowing. Yeah. The next day. Happened for sure. I swung. So maybe it's all my self-awareness. Maybe it's network marketing that opened my eyes to personal growth. Maybe it's Esther Hicks. Maybe it's John C. Maxwell. Maybe it's Tony Robbins. I don't know. But all I know is that every day I align myself with personal growth. And here's what I do know to be true. If you're in the personal growth space and you're working on yourself and you wake up in a bad mood, that is your own jar scope like an airplane keeps it on track, you know, it's, that's your own personal growth saying, I need to go back to the basics. I need to sit here and meditate and focus on myself and work on the 20 minutes that I have extra or one hour and do personal growth so I can get back aligned with why the fuck I'm doing what I'm doing. Ben's, Ben's, uh, and a couple of people that know me and know my story. I just navigated a divorce and personal development allowed me to go through it um much smoother than i ever could have before right like if i didn't have the background and and the and and being bulletproof the way i am i wouldn't have been able to navigate it like i do and people that don't know when they finally found out they were like oh i had no idea like you you just been navigating it like it's so easy to where now i almost got like survivor's remorse or survivor's guilt because as i share my story people are like I, I was just at a, a birthday party, a friend of mine, he's like, man, I'm about to be where you was at, man, because, you know, so I was like, yo, don't use my my testimony and my smooth process, like, run your own race, you know what I'm saying? But just know, don't have the fear of going through the process. If, like, if y'all there, y'all hit that threshold and you can go through t- with it. But I say all that to say personal development, growth, just, just building my mind mentally um, helped me through all that. And I and I didn't I didn't look up at God and say why you know what I'm saying like I, I don't even do that no more I just know that everything is working in my favor and I and I looked at it like that like all right I'm I'm we're going through this for a reason I'm not supposed to know my daughters are still good you know business is still thriving we're doing it like everything is still moving on I can control this though I can control how I navigate through this through this process and that that was that. And that's that's that that's that you know moment I had when I when I was sulking and grieving for a year and three months. I woke mm. up, I said, Tiana, wait, like I could only control what was going on up here. Thanks. And then that so you're right. I think that you know, but look, that goes back to personal growth because people are so quick to blame external circumstances for their situation. Yeah. And that blame game is real. But when you start pointing, you got four back at you. And when I, I learned that a long time ago, I always own my shit, always own my shit. I'm the probably the one person that is the most accountable for my wins and my losses yeah. because I'm so vulnerable and honest. And maybe that's why people, you know, like, you know, my brand is because I do own it. But at the end of the day, it's like I publicly said, look, I didn't own my shit. I agreed for a year and three months, maybe. But then I also said, but that was my grace period because everybody, you have to give yourself some grace. So let's say you had a fucking meltdown and you weren't as composed during this time. And that's okay too, because you have to give yourself some grace. Yeah, man, as we close out, I was going to do uh, something we hadn't done before, do like a speed round where I I, I give you um, like a, a, a word and then you give me the first thing that comes to mind. Um, okay, I like this. We'll do that and then we'll close it out real quick because it's been a powerful conversation. Um, so much value people are gonna get from this. Um, and I'll let you plug your stuff for sure, even though we talk about most of it. So um entrepreneurship. It's hard. Success. Struggle. Hustle. Season. <laughs> Legacy. Impact. 
Bar talk. And coffee. And coffee. Social media. I'm a genius. Mm. Creativity. Comes naturally. All right, last one. We're going to throw a little haymaker in there. Artemis. My world. That's what's up. That's what's up. Artemis is her dog, by the way. Artemis is my dog. It is a female dog. I know it sounds like it's a guy's name, but it's not. Artemis in the Greek mythology, it was Apollo and Artemis, and Artemis means goddess of the earth. Better. Sure. I am right. Vince, I told I am right. It means goddess of the earth. Hey, I just gotta say this real quick. I fuck with your perspective, your knowledge base. Um, this is a great conversation. I wish you nothing but the best and more continued success. Um, anything that we can do to help assist whatever we hear, because like, like I say, I, I, I love everything you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you so much. I this man. You, you're, you're an official extraordinaire now. You're part of the family, uh, all our previous guests. Um, and it's dope. We're actually building community within the guests because because people are, yeah, so we'll we'll take care of that. Um, yeah, plug yourself. How can people find you? How can people get tapped into the Reels to Riches? Yo, Reels to Riches is, is the best online educational space. Dude, I'm helping people making money right now. Like, it's it's game changes, changing lives. But here's what I say. Uh, impact over money, but I'm also a capitalist, so I have to do both. Tianaburst.com is where you can find all of my masterminds. It's my new educational portal. I'm planting my flag here. I'm diving deep to help 100,000 people from all across the world uh, in the four areas that I know to be true, uh, create impact and legacy for their, their life, uh, not only uh, physically, but also financially. And uh, and that's that's it. There you go. There you have it, y'all. There we go. Another extraordinary episode of the Extraordinary Exchange Podcast. I'm Nate. That's Ben's. Tiana, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been an amazing conversation. Um, you know, me and Ben's, we just two or 12 brothers, uh, black men in the world, building a legacy through education and smart financial strategies. And this is one of the strategies right here. We're just giving y'all free game, um, hearing amazing testimonies, and uh, connecting y'all with people who are providing real impact in the world like Lady Burst over here. Um, but yeah, thank you again. Yep. Tap in with us on all our streams. Y'all know where to find us. And uh, I'll let y'all on the flip side. Thank you. That was dope.